let's take a look at some substitution examples. So I've listed out our steps once again. When we're going to apply substitution to integrate, we want to first determine our u, and you can think of that as your inner function. You want to take the derivative, so find du dx, and then isolate du by multiplying both sides of the equation by dx. Then we will manipulate the integral or the du so that we can make the substitutions and make the integral purely in terms of u. So we'll be able to integrate and apply our basic integration strategies. Then we'll integrate with respect to u, and then we'll simplify and back substitute. So those are our steps. And so now let's take a look at a couple of examples. So here's my first one. I'm looking at this example and I'm thinking, is this one of my basic integrals? And it is, it is not. It does not fall into our category of just basic integrals or integral formulas. And so I think, okay, what could I do here? What could be my u? And again, the more we practice this, the better we're going to get at picking the u. But in this case, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, you know what, if this denominator were rewritten, we could write it as 5x times x squared plus 3 to the negative first power, just using rules of exponents. And you know, I might not actually write it this way, but in my mind I'm thinking about that because now I can see an inner function. Remember our substitution is allowing me to see a antiderivative, right, for something that came out of a chain rule a, a composition, you know, something that we took the derivative using the chain rule, but so it was a composition, an inner function, and an outer function, and so when we're identifying our u, we're looking for what was that inner function, what could that inner function have been, and so that looks like a good candidate for my u, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pick u to be x squared plus 3. I'm going to take the derivative du dx and I'm going to get 2x. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by dx to isolate the du. So I get 2x dx. And now I want to make my substitutions. Now I'm going to actually erase this so I can make my substitutions over here. As I said, I so that was more of a thought bubble, right? Like that was more of trying to identify the u and seeing that this is actually in the denominator that is um, our u, our inner function, because now I can make the substitutions. Now I'm looking right here, how I am gonna rewrite this is like this, so we can see how to make the substitution. So I'm gonna pull the constant five, we can pull constants outside of the integral, and write this as one over x squared plus three times x dx. Now we might not normally write it that way, but this is a way for us to see how to make the substitutions, because right here is my u, so I will substitute the u in there, and notice here I have x dx. Now over here where I found du, du is actually 2 times x dx. So I can divide both sides here by 2 and then 1 half du equals x dx. Now I could also have manipulated within the integral and so I just as another option, so an or, um, another thing I could have done is I could have put the 2 right here, 2x dx and then if I multiply something by 2, I have to also adjust by dividing by 2. So I could divide by 2 outside the integral. So we can, when we're doing substitution, and you can see that in my steps right here, we can either manipulate the integral or we can manipulate the du. And so that's that's sort of up to you and however you want to see it, however you want to do those manipulations in order to make the substitutions. Um, but we do have to be a little bit cautious, and I'll explain some of those things as we go along. So... Let's keep working here. Let's make our substitutions because now this is going to become 1 over u and x dx is going to become 1 half du. And now I can make those substitutions. I still have the 5 outside. I've got 1 over u. x dx is 1 half du. And take a look at that. Pull out. Let's go ahead and pull out that 1 half uh, to the front of the integral. And I've got 1 uh, 5 halves times integral of 1 over u, du. Now I can integrate because now that I've made those, so back again to the steps, now that I've made those substitutions and my integral is purely in terms of u, so my integral is now just in terms of u and it is a basic integral. So this is a basic integral. The integral of 1 over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u, so this becomes 5 halves times the natural log of the absolute value of u, it's an indefinite integral, so I have my integration constant plus c. And a last step, I won't go back to those uh, steps again, I won't scroll away, but 
The last step when we're doing substitution of an indefinite integral is to back substitute and put our u back in. So this is 5 has the natural log of x squared plus 3 plus c. And that is my integral and my steps for substitution. Now, um, we, we could always check this. So if you wanted to, you could go ahead, take the derivative, apply your derivative formulas. As mentioned in the beginning, substitution is a way for us to work our way through an integral that came from a function that was a composition. And you can see the composition right there. You can see that x squared plus 3, that polynomial, was composed inside of a natural log function. Uh, turns out, actually, in this case, I just noticed as I was saying that, um, that x squared plus 3 is always positive. So this is actually equivalent. Uh, it's not incorrect to leave the absolute value, um, but it is a little redundant. We don't actually need the absolute value um, here because x squared plus 3 uh, for all values of x would be positive, so we could drop the absolute value and write it um, as I have below. Okay, let's do one more. And let's take a look here at this example. So when we come along here, first thing we need to do is figure out what our u should be. So in this case, I see the exponential function. I also see the square root in the bottom. And as I've mentioned, it is just going to take practice doing lots and lots of u subs before we can figure out what the appropriate u would be. And sometimes we pick a u. In this case, I'm going to start with u equals the square root of x or x to the 1 half. Sometimes we pick a u and we can't quite figure out how to make the substitution or we can't make the substitution work to get the integral all in terms of u. And that's when we go back and we maybe try a different u. A lot of integration is going to be that way, where we might try one thing, and if it doesn't work, well, we just have to go back and try something else. So uh, let's give this u a try, though. I think this is a good idea because we can see here that that was a composition, like what's up uh, in the exponent of the exponential here. Um, was composed into an exponential. So let's see if this will work. When we take the derivative, du dx, we're going to get 1 half x to the minus 1 half, which is 1, uh, 1 over 2. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to drop the exponent and turn it into a square root at the same time. <clears throat> 1 over 2 times the square root of x. And then let's separate the differential. Let's multiply both sides by dx. And so we'll get du is actually 1 over 2 square root of x dx. Now, up here in the integral, I see I have a square root in the denominator. So what if we wrote this as e to the square root of x times 1 over the square root of x? And, you know, you don't have to separate it, um, separate the product like that, separate the quotient into a product as I did. But it can be a little easier, certainly as we're making the substitution, to see where to make the substitution if we break it apart like that. Because what I can see here is, here's my u, so I'm going to be able to replace that with u. I have 1 over the square root of x dx. Over here I have 1 over 2 root x dx. So here's where we could either manipulate within the integral itself, or we can manipulate over here with our du. And so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say, well, I have 1 over 2, so if I multiply both sides by 2 here, I find that 2 du is 1 over the square root of x dx, and then I can make that direct substitution right here. This is 2 du. So we'll make those substitutions, and I'm kind of uh, ran, ran a little bit to the right here, so I'm just going to write an equals. We'll just bring it down. Down here, this is equal to the integral when I make the substitutions. So now I'm actually going to do those subs, substitutions. This is now the integral of e to the u times 2 du. Now I can pull that 2 right out of the integral. Remember, constants can move in or out of the integral, constant multiples. And so I've got e to the u <clears throat> du. And now I have it all in terms of u. It's a basic integral. It's just the integral of an exponential function. So this becomes 2 e to the u. It's an indefinite integral, so I have plus c. And the last step of the substitution of these indefinite integrals is going to be to back substitute, to put our u back in. So this is going to be, uh, let me just make it a little bit bigger. This is going to be 2 e to the square root of x plus c. And we can always check that. If we wanted to, we could take the derivative. We would have to use the chain rule, and we'll see that we'd get back to what we were integrating right there. Okay, I had said one more example, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push it, and we're going to do three examples on this video. So let's take a look at one more. Let's take a look at this guy. Now, here we've got sine cubed. Remember, and sometimes 
it can be helpful to, here's another little rewriting trick. It can be helpful to, to remember that the sine cubed of x is just a short way to write the sine of x cubed, right? So we don't have to use the parentheses. We have this notation in math with trig functions that that is indicating that we're cubing the sine. But instead of using the parentheses and, and the exponent out here, we say sine cubed of x is the same as sine of x cubed. But the reason I rewrote it that way, whether, whether we do that or not, whether we just kind of think about this as like a, a thought bubble when I see that sine cubed of x, or if I actually rewrite it, we have to identify, remember if we're going to use substitution, we have to identify what our u should be, what our um, u as in the inner function from a composition is. So we're looking at this and we're thinking, well, look at that, that sine of x is inside of a power. So that's a good candidate for my u. So my u is the sine of x, and then my du in that case, du dx, take the derivative, is cosine of x. Uh, separate the differential, multiply both sides by dx here. And so then du is equal to cosine of x dx. <clears throat> and that can be a direct substitution because now I've got u and this entire thing, cosine of x dx, is directly du. So I can make, oops, sorry about that, my hand caught the screen. Um, we can make that direct substitution, so this becomes the integral of u to the third times du. I didn't even have to do any sort of manipulation to make those substitutions. Those were just direct substitutions. So I was able to just go and plug those right in, make those substitutions. All right, and now we can actually take that integral. So the integral of u to the third, uh, just using the power rule, becomes u to the fourth over four. It's an indefinite integral, so we have our integration constant plus c. And then that last step, just to substitute our u back in, sine of x to the fourth over four plus c, and using just that sh kind of shorthand notation for trig functions to exponents. So that actually can just be written as sine to the fourth of x over four plus c. And we could see if we wanted to, we could take the derivative and we could see that that will take us back to sine cubed of x times cosine of x dx if we took the derivative there. Okay. All right. So let's keep practicing. Again, I can't uh, emphasize this enough. The more you do substitution, the more you play around and you try some substitutions, and if they don't work, try something else, um, the better you'll get at determining what your u should be within an integral if, it's, if you're going to be using uh, substitution to integrate.